come and go and come and go and come and go for the 24 hours and then submit at the very end. Are they questions or essays? They are questions. They're, they're, they're questions. Uh, the idea of the, they're, they're very similar to the quizzes. With as few thinking questions as I, sometimes on the quiz I'll put a question that I know it's a little vague, a little confusing, you know, on purpose. That's a discriminator, is it? Well, I'm not sure. Is it? No, 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 no. It's not to this. No, no, no. It's just to make you, because you can sooner or later get the right answer if you just try enough times, right? So it's not like I'm trying to get the grades done. Well, how many goes do we have in the exam as opposed to the... We have one go in the exam. One. But I try to avoid, to the extent I can, questions that are not, is not clear. Right, so in the quizzes, I'm willing to give you a question here and there that's a little unclear because you can sort of hit it a few times, read it a bunch of times, maybe read something else. That's learning. You see, that's that's learning, right? And and the whole idea of the quizzes is not to measure you, it's to make you learn more. Everything is supposed to make you learn more. Everything is supposed to make you learn more. You know, you're very generous. You give people a hundred dollars, and that's I've got to imagine. But well, some of the Coursera people test. taught me to do that, right? They said, don't think of quizzes as measurement. No, but some, some of you all you want to... No, no, but some, some of the courses... You need to redo it yeah. to be sure that your understanding is... Yeah. And, and, but again, it's, it's for learning. My goal is, is, if you're spending 10 minutes on the quiz, yeah. I want you to be learning something in that 10 minutes. Exactly, yeah. So I've had a few where... I've sort of missed yeah. the point that you've made in one of the lectures until I get to the quiz and go, oh, I don't know that, and then go back and, yeah. Um, and, and yeah, it makes you go, go back and back. And there's no, there's no reason to punish, right? There's, a, there's just, like, why would I punish a volunteer student who could, like, just vanish into the mist like that, right? Um, I should have brought my laptop. So, um, so uh, 28,000 signed up, 14,000 logged in once. Uh, right now we have about uh, 4,000 watching the lectures every week and about 3,500 taking the quiz every week. So you all react to like 28,000, we're down to about 10%. Part of the problem is that you can't actually get a flavor of the course that you're bound with that. You know, a lot of people, you can play off. Yeah, that's 14,000. Yeah, well, that's it. I mean, I had a But that's not. Go ahead. I was going to say, yeah, because I've had some stuff gone on, and then I've actually just found that, like, you know, I go in and I start, and I just think, actually, I just don't have time at the moment. Yeah, I'm doing nothing creative. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I mean, this is my summer on the Six to ten percent of the students every week. Six to ten percent. So there's a joke that if you want to have really good retention, you just have a one week class. Yeah. Right? It's so like, whoa, 100 percent retention. So the longer your class is, the more you're going to lose. And there's nothing. Not sure, but they might be slow to start. Yeah. But you need to find the right week. So, you know, a lot of people get all worried about this retention as if it were a university and they were paying money and somehow there's a federal government involved or state scholarships. None of that matters. And, and the bottom line is, is you're learning when you want to learn. You're in control of your own learning. That's unprecedented. Do you have a course in other languages? Um, what's that? Other languages. Well, there are universities that teach the courses in other languages. Like there's French universities and Spanish universities. Well, Coursera, you wouldn't have the same course? Yeah, I don't, I don't, I, so that's a personal dream of mine, but I don't think that, I, I think that the right thing for that would be to have some other teacher, like in, in France, right, who would become like a colleague of mine. That person would teach the class their own way, right? It might be very similar, but I want them to own the class and really, you know, because because if you're teaching this class of mine in France, I think you need something about the mini tell. Yeah. It just died last year. 
like the Minitel, right? I mean, it's, I mean, there have to be. So, I mean, everything has to be somewhat contextualized to to cultures. And so, just translating my stuff into French would be good, and it's helpful for, for understanding. But I think to I'd really love to see the classes reinstanced in multiple languages, which is more like than a book. And my Python class is the Python class. My goal for the Python class is to have that in an infinite number of languages. But that's but I haven't even got that on Coursera yet. So. I say I've just started yet. Yeah, I've just decided to learn Python as part of one of the other courses I'm doing. Right? Uh, Which one? Uh, algorithms. Uh, was design and uh, yeah, algorithm design uh, part one. From uh, is that Illinois? Do you have programming background? Uh, yeah, well, I, okay, I'm well that's not so bad. Uh, yeah, because an algorithm course is not a computer course. Okay, yeah, yeah. Fine. Well, I started off many years ago. Um, that was one thing I found quite interesting yeah. on your course was going back to yeah the, the program the internet. I was thinking, well, I started at uh, Southampton University doing computer science degree. Uh, well, I started in '93. Okay. So I remember, yeah, I remember when there was this thing about just popping out. Uh, the brand new idea of having a graphical browser was like, you know, that was the cutting edge. Yeah, that was right then. Yep. Uh, and then, yeah, one of the media classes we did was, was talking about the new emerging standard that may or may not take off for MP3 for a way of you know, encoding audio. And I, I never thought it would take off. Oh, I thought sure as. Well, I just thought you know, you're losing quality every time you do it. Kids these days don't know the difference anymore. I know exactly. But then, well, yeah, I just remember. Well, I mean, yeah, the bit, the bit. This is for MP3 being lossy. I mean, the bits the bit you lose are only of interest to your dog. Well, there's also like a nice throwback to vinyl too. Yeah. So now there's this premium. So the vinyl is premium. It's premium. Yeah. <laughs> When I was at university, if, if I was going, if half my you know, sort of work day was spent in office, then I was busy. Right. Most of it was, was self study. Exactly. And as it happened, I, I did five years and then, and then left before taking my final exams because I got offered a job. So I just kind of right. oh, I don't need this degree, yeah. which is part of the reason for going back now. So I think that any school that has a good residential program for undergraduates, I think on campus, something that brings people together and causes that growing up between 18 to 22, that's going to, that's, not, there's no threat. And that's not, to me, that's not even a uh, threat for um, even, you know, schools that aren't even top 100 schools. If they've got a good place for young people to go and grow up together, I think that's going to be the issue for the next thousand years. Um, and I also think that, like, what you guys would call FE, further education, that's also important. Now, that's where people don't live, they come, but there's still got to be people. Because when you're lost, you need a guide that's human. It's really hard if you knew nothing to learn it all online. You can do it, but it takes you much longer. Whereas you need a person. But I think there are places that are going to suffer. And that is places that are not resident and are um, are not really adding that much value. So what's interesting to me is I travel around the world and I talk to various people. The most, the most interesting group of people that I, of students that I talked to was in Barcelona. They were all late 20s and they were all taking five Coursera classes at the same time and none of them were taking master's degrees. They already had a bachelor's degree, and they were using Coursera as a free master's degree. Because it turns out that in Spain, or at least Barcelona, master's degrees come from small private schools that are non-residential, who are live in a building and they've got a few crappy faculty, and they don't actually have really big alumni bases. They don't help you get a job. They don't get you to know anybody. And the teachers are kind of okay. And you pay money for it. Versus Coursera, which is free, a better education. You still don't get job help. 
but what are you getting for the money that you're paying? And so those those kind of places are in some grave trouble, right? And they're closing already. And so so and that just gives you a sense of what the value proposition is of a educational institution. If it's just kind of like access to knowledge and nothing else. That's kind of bad. If it's growing up and access to knowledge. So just a difference of mentality in different countries. Yeah. In France, you would do high diploma, but the good student would do law and business. You would do two courses, uh -huh. and you would surely go to a master's. Uh -huh. When I did my master's in England, when they did the graduation and they give all the papers, there were hardly any English names. All the students were from Asia, Africa, not the any English. And I asked, but where the English are? And they said, they don't do master's. Because they just go to work. Yeah. That's very common in the United States as well. Mm -hmm. uh, they just go to work. A master's degree, if you're an American and you're taking a master's degree, to some degree it means that you probably figured out what you wanted to do a little late in your bachelor's degree. Because you've got more generals than universities. Yes, yes. Well, in France we have to do specialize and they don't like if you change your mind because right. you don't know what you want to do. Well, in the United States, the first two years of college, you're supposed to be confused. Yeah. And then this last two years of undergraduate, you're supposed to figure it out. So the idea is to be broad and diverse and learn, get away from your family, get away from your high school, show up with a bunch of crazy wild professors with hair flying everywhere, and they will, they will blow your mind and you will realize that all of a sudden that you want to do blank and then you got like two years left. And some people don't figure that out until too late, and then they kind of have to like stick a master's degree on. And like, oh, now I know what I want, but it's like I'm in my third year. It's a little late to figure it out. So then I'm gonna, I really want to know X. So I'm gonna do a master's degree. But with these two first years at the U.S. university seems to be much more the students are much more trained in France. That's my main experience. You just go to the class if you want, you don't work in your It's only on your two main subjects, then you have tutorial one hour per week. I studied all the time. The only time people would see me at universities was my compulsory tutorials. Okay. And then I had all exams for the second subject, not the mains, and a big exam at the end of the year for the two mains. And that's how there is no selection to get into university. No university, there are thousands of students who are sitting in a few thousands of students, but only 10% go over the two first year. That's the way they do the selection. Yeah. There, way, there's something there's something to that. In a way it's good, but it's yeah, not yeah. democratic because anyone get there. Yep. Can go and, and study. They can. And the requirement and the and the, and the, and the and the measurement is very clear and well known. You yeah. know what it's going to do. It has a cost for the whole community. Yeah. Because each student has high costs yeah. for the state, government. Yeah. Well, they certainly have the cost of the time. And the cost of the time for the student. Because you said that the tuition is only a hundred pounds. Okay, it's minimal. Yeah. And there is no way when you study law you have to go to the state university. There's no college for things like um, things with uh, more control with government. It's only state university that can prepare.